Merry Christmas. It's another Christmas story time with Nana. This one is one of Nana's favorite stories from Christmas time, and it was actually made into a movie. The Polar Express. On Christmas Eve many years ago, I lay quietly in my bed. I did not rustle the sheets. I breathed slowly and silently. I was listening for a sound, a sound a friend had told me I'd never hear, the ringing bells of Santa's sleigh. There is no Santa, my friend had insisted, but I knew he was wrong. Late that night, I did hear sounds, though not the ringing of bells. From outside came the sounds of hissing steam and squeaking metal. I looked through my window and saw a train standing perfectly still in front of me. Ooh, there was a train right outside his window. It was wrapped in an apron of steam. Snowflakes fell lightly around it. The conductor stood at the open door of one of the car cars. He took a large pocket watch from his vest, then looked up at my window. I put on my slippers and robe. I tiptoed downstairs and out the door. All aboard, the conductor cried out. I ran up to him. Well, he said, are you coming? Where, I asked. Why, to the North Pole, of course, was his answer. This is the Polar Express. I took his outstretched hand and he pulled me aboard. Oh, so the train is called the Polar Express. The train was filled with other children, all in their pajamas and nightgowns. We sang Christmas carols and ate candies with nougat centers as white as snow. We drank hot cocoa as thick and rich as melted chocolate bars. Outside, the lights of towns and villages flickered in the distance as the Polar Express raced northward. Ooh, they had fun on the Polar Express, singing songs, eating candy, drinking hot cocoa. Soon there were no more lights to be seen. We traveled through cold, dark forests where lean wolves roamed and white-tailed rabbits hid from our train as it thundered through the quiet wilderness. Ooh, there are the wolves. The rabbits hid from the train because it was noisy. We climbed mountains so high it seemed as if we would scrape the moon. But the Polar Express never slowed down. Faster and faster we ran along, rolling over peaks and through valleys like a car on a roller coaster. See him way up there on that mountain? Whoa! The mountains turned into hills, the hills to snow-covered plains. We crossed a barren desert of ice, the great polar ice cap. Lights appeared in the distance. They looked like the lights of a strange ocean liner sailing on a frozen sea. There, said the conductor, is the North Pole. Oh, so those lights were the North Pole. The North Pole, it was a huge city standing alone at the top of the world, filled with factories where every Christmas toy was made. At first, we saw no elves. They are gathering at the center of the city, the conductor told us. That is where Santa will give the first gift of Christmas. Who receives the first gift, we all asked. The conductor answers, he will choose one of you. Ooh, so Santa's going to choose one of the kids that came on the Polar Express to give the first gift of Christmas to. Look, shouted one of the children. The elves! Outside, we saw hundreds of elves as our train drew closer to the center of the North Pole. We slowed to a crawl, so crowded were the streets with Santa's helpers. When the Polar Express could no go no further, we stopped and the conductor led us outside. Oh, look at how busy it is up at the North Pole. Busy, busy, busy. 
we pressed through the crowd to the edge of the large open circle, in front of us stood Santa's sleigh. The reindeer were excited. They pranced and paced, ringing the silver sleigh bells that hung from their harnesses. It was a magical sound, like nothing I'd ever heard. Across the circle, the elves moved apart and Santa Claus appeared. The elves cheered wildly. He marched over to us and pointing to me said, let's have this fellow here. He jumped into his sleigh. The conductor handed me up. I sat on Santa's knee and he asked, no, what would you like for Christmas? <gasps> There's Santa. Santa picked the boy to get the first gift of Christmas. I knew that I could have any gift I could imagine, but the one thing I wanted most for Christmas was not inside Santa's giant bag, but I wanted more than anything was one silver bell from Santa's sleigh. When I asked, Santa smiled. Then he gave me a hug and told an elf to cut a bell from reindeer's harnesses. The elf tossed it up to Santa. He stood holding the bell high above him and called out, the first gift of Christmas. So he wanted one of the bells off of the reindeer's harness. A clock struck midnight as the elves roared their approval. Santa handed the bell to me and I put it in my pocket. The conductor helped me down from the sleigh. Santa shouted out the reindeer's names and cracked his whip. His team charged forward and climbed into the air. Santa circled once above us, then disappeared into the cold, dark polar sky. <gasps> there he goes. Santa's taking off to go deliver the presents to all the boys and girls. As soon as we were back inside the Polar Express, the other children asked to see the bell. I reached into my pocket, but the only thing I felt was a hole. I had lost the silver bell from Santa's sleigh. Let's hurry outside and look for it, one of the children said, but the train gave a sudden lurch and started moving. We were on our way home. Oh, he's so sad because he lost the bell that he asked Santa for. Aw, that's sad. It broke my heart to lose the bell. When the train reached my house, I sadly left the other children. I stood at my doorway and waved goodbye. The conductor said something from the moving train, but I couldn't hear him. What? I yelled out. He cupped his hands around his mouth. Merry Christmas, he shouted. The Polar Express let out a loud blast from the whistle and sped away. I'm saying goodbye to the conductor on the Polar Express. On Christmas morning, my little sister Sarah and I opened our presents. When it looked as if everything had been unwrapped, Sarah found one last small box behind the tree. It had my name on it. Inside was the silver bell. There was a note. Found this on my seat of my sleigh. Fix that hole in your pocket. Signed, Mr. C. I shook the bell. It made the most beautiful sound my sister and I had ever heard. But my mother said, Oh, that's too bad. Yes, said my father. It's broken. When I'd shaken the bell, my parents had not heard a sound. So he shook the bell and him and his sister could hear it, but his parents could not hear the bell at all. At one time, most of my friends could hear the bell, but as years passed, it fell silent for all of them. Even Sarah found one Christmas that she could no longer hear its sweet sound. Though I've grown old, the bell still rings for me, as it does for all who truly believe. The end. So we truly believe in the spirit of Christmas, which is about loving, caring, being kind and generous, and just sharing time together. I love you so much. Mwah!